Something that's become very clear to me over the last couple years is that we don't get as many cool clear electronics anymore. It's become a bit of a trend lately to kind of release stuff that's like special version maybe, um, but they don't do a full line. Like you used to be able to get like everything in a clear, cool plastic shell and you just can't do that anymore. At least not with everything. But now we've got the Keyboom Phantom DIY mechanical keyboard kit. And luckily this is not the kit. This is a fully built keyboard because I don't have time to sit here and build it for you guys. Let's open the box and take a look at this fully assembled clear keyboard. The Phantom 81 is a 75% 82 keys hot swappable mechanical keyboard. And they've also got the weight on here. It's 1.43 kilos. So the cool thing is that even though this is clear and I think it's mostly plastic, it's not light. You're not gonna get like a cheap kind of feeling uh, light experience. And oh my God, is it ever pretty. Okay. <laughs> Before I take this out, I'll take the I'll take what else we got here. We got cable. Uh, we've got a switch and keycap puller. Comes with a couple extra switches, which is pretty cool. They've got these are actually uh, I don't know if they're special for this keyboard particularly, but they've got these clear switches. It is wireless. So part of the weight is actually gonna be the batteries that are in this thing. It's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and you can use USB-C. Yep, port right there. You can use uh, 5.0 Bluetooth and you can use 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It's not crazy heavy. I've definitely held like much heavier keyboards, but for something that's wireless, I, yeah, this thing's got some heft to it. I like the knob, pretty satisfying. Can click, yeah, the nice, nice little click there. Um, along with our USB-C here, we've got a Windows and Mac switch to change layouts. And then we've also got a Bluetooth, USB, and 2.4 gigahertz switch to change it depending on what you wanna do. And obviously, if you set it to wireless, it's gonna turn on! Look at all this RGB, wow. <laughs> I really like this thing. My only complaint so far is the stabilizers sound and feel a little hollow and rattly. I think normally this comes as a kit, so you can improve that when you put it together yourself. Uh, the rest of it actually sounds and feels pretty good though. We'll, we'll touch more on that later. Currently installed are their crystal switches, which are these nice clear switches that match the keyboard perfectly. Um, we can't find anywhere listed as to what exactly the material for the plate is. We know that the case is acrylic um, and I haven't opened this or put it together myself. So I'm not 100% sure. It kind of looks like brass, but this thing is pretty heavy. On top of the battery weight, you're also just gonna have a weight on the bottom here that says Keyboom on it. As much as I'm not crazy about the Keyboom logo itself, I like that this is actually embossed into the plate. It's just a nice touch. It's not, you know, just like painted over or something. And while I'm looking at the bottom, I gotta say, I think the bottom is just as pretty as the top is. I love this ring of LEDs around the PCB. And then you've just got these individual lights as well. I think it lights the whole thing up really well. And actually, you get some pretty decent diffusion on the bottom of the case and around it on your desk, which you don't always see. A lot of the time, my problem with RGB is that it's not diffused very nicely. And so it's like, wow, it's bright lights and everything, but it doesn't look good. You can see all the individual LEDs and you kind of can here too, cause it's not frosted. It's just clear acrylic, but you know, that's kind of the point here. So I'm a little okay with it. When it comes to the switches though, this actually does look really good. It's south facing RGB and it really does shine through the switches pretty nicely. I am a really big fan of this. One thing I'm only just noticing now as well, be probably because of how like perfectly it's kind of machined in here and, and held in place is the USB dongle. They've got a really nice slot for it right here and it just kind of sits there without, oh uh, well. Oh, it's magnetized. Oh, that's great. You might lose it still. It's not in one of those ones that like it clicks into place or whatever, but this magnet means that you're probably not gonna lose it when you're just like moving it from one spot in your desk to somewhere else, which is actually a pretty nice touch. Well, it looks pretty nice. Uh, what I really wanna do though is do a typing test and check this thing out, but not before we talk about our sponsor, XSplit. XSplit is a cutting edge software company that provides advanced broadcasting and video production tools for creators, gamers, and businesses. They offer a range of products like Broadcaster and Vcam. Broadcaster allows users to capture, produce, and stream high quality video content to popular platforms such as Twitch and YouTube. Vcam allows users to remove, replace, or blur their webcam background during a video call, live stream, or recording, creating a more professional looking and distraction free video. Check out the XSplit today at lmg.gg slash XSplit and use code Linus to get 69% off your first purchase or subscription. Nice. Where's the cable? Oh, here it is, here's the cable. It's a pretty nice white cable. I didn't actually talk about it too much earlier. 
Um, it's sleeved. This is pretty cool. These cables have a ferrite bead inside here to protect electrical interference. I had no idea. I've seen them before and never thought about it, but we looked it up and apparently that's what it's going to do. Sure. Asus. Oh, gee. Um, so we're going to toggle this. We're going to toggle this to USB. Is it working? Oh, okay. So that is a really minor annoyance that I have with a few keyboards that are both wireless and wired. Um, sometimes you have to wake them up and I don't like that if I'm wired. I kind of want my keyboard to just be ready to go. Like if it's plugged in, I should just have RGB going all the time. I should be able to type whatever I want and it should just be instantly on. It shouldn't have to wake up. Uh, minor gripe and I've only seen it on a few wireless keyboards. A lot of them do just work as long as it's plugged in. So to each their own, something to know. But let's type and see how much I love or hate these switches. I just stare at the screen and type things. Everyone, this is everyone's favorite part. Everyone loves to watch these parts. Okay, I screwed up the end of locks. I started talking about things. <laughs> it's only 100 words per minute, 96%. But you know, aside from that space bar, it is a pretty decent typing experience. I actually like it. Um, there's something kind of sticky about these clear keycaps that I am not sure exactly what's doing. I felt it before. I know that the Angry Meow keyboards, uh, especially the Amafa that I tried, it's also got very similar uh, clear keycaps that kind of look and feel like this. I don't know if it's the exact same set or what, but yeah, just uh, something to note. I don't, it's not bad and it's not sticky in a gross way. It's just, they're not like slippery at all. Like when I tried the ceramic keycaps, there's like a bit of a weird slip to them and that's just absolutely not here. I really can't get over how good the RGB looks, especially on the like per switch RGB on this keyboard. I think it's just beautiful. It's got 19 modes built in and you can change those. Let's try changing a couple of them. So we're gonna try a couple of these modes. You can install software and change stuff as well, but there's a bunch of hotkeys that are available thanks to this handy. I actually, I will be honest. I like this manual. I don't like when you get a single card with all the hotkeys and stuff on it. It's a really minor thing that it's like an open leaflet, but I actually really like it. Everything's big. All the text is huge because they're not trying to fit it on a single little card. So it's actually really easy to read just like all of this stuff. Uh, and like, like all of this is just, I know it's a little small on screen for you guys probably, but in person, this is actually a really large font. Um, and it's just easy to read. I can quickly see everything that I'm looking for here. So we're going to go function and backslash. Oh, <laughs> what else we oh it's like pulsing around the side only. So if you don't want the switch illumination and you just want the, oh, oh, they are. Oh my God. Brilliant, David. Brilliant. That's why we keep you around here. Genius. This is actually really nice. Okay, I'll, I'll quickly cycle through all these. I won't get too hung up on them, but they're, okay, so it's just like a rainbow, like clockwise kind of thing. Uh, this is like an all over rainbow. Ooh, it's like raining or something. Going across. And then I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and then just pulses probably through the different colors. You can probably set it to like one static color. I kind of like this one too. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's got like, a lot of different RGB modes. And I think that you're probably gonna be able to find something that you like uh, within the 19, I think they say modes. Is this it? as bright as it can go too? Let's talk about brightness. This is really dumb. Uh, FN function and down is brightness up. And then function up is brightness down. This, yeah, this is doing something else entirely. This is like function and down is like changing modes or something. Oh no, it is brightness. And it's the guide that is wrong because function up is backlight brightness up. Yeah, so this has gotta be a typo. I'm not crazy. It absolutely says brightness down, function up. You probably can't see that, whatever. Sven saw it, David saw it. And then, so backlight speed is also left and right. So if there's a pattern going, you can up or lower the speed, which is actually pretty sweet. Oh yeah, look at it go. <laughs> then we turn it way down, then yes, woo. Oh, that's great. Toggle the backlight color function and this. Cool, oh, okay, so on top of all the different like breathing modes and whatever, you can just cycle through individual colors as well, which is, oh man, this thing's really good. There's a lot of keyboards that can do this. A lot of keyboards have different RGB modes and software that can change it however you want. Um, however, I gotta say in this clear case with this like beautiful PCB. They went with something really pretty. This is not a super common PCB color and it really matches 
everything that they've done with all of these accents everywhere, like the knob, the plate, um, the little patch where you've got your connectors and uh, yeah, even just the PCB is this really cool color and I'm very sold by this thing. One minor thing to note that I didn't even notice, Sven had to point it out actually, is uh, the brightness only seems to affect the switch RGB and not the bottom LEDs. So take that as you will. Regardless, you can probably just turn all the RGB off if you don't like it. So the question becomes, do you want to buy one? They're not that bad, actually. This thing is fully hot swap. Let's take a switch out just to prove that with their handy dandy switch and keycap pullers. Yeah, I hate getting these fresh keycap pullers because they're always like right tight up against each other. So the first time you gotta use them, you really gotta get your fingernail in there to kind of help them take a switch, take a, take a keycap out. We take our switch power, we take the switch out. One thing I kind of forgot to mention earlier is that on top of this just being like pretty well constructed, honestly, uh, they've actually got a pour on layer in between the PCB and the plate as well. So if you're a fan of a bunch of foams and stuff, then you'll like that. I personally do, because I think that you can take a cheap keyboard and make it sound really good by just slapping in some silicone or some foam. But that is something to consider. Some people are purists and they don't want anything in there. But I mean, hey, you can just disassemble this thing and take it out. Or if it comes as a kit, then you just don't install it and you do whatever you want. You could tape the bottom of this, uh, but I personally would not tape mod this keyboard at all. I think it looks way too sick to do that and you're gonna cover up a ton of LEDs. So add that into your consideration when deciding if you wanna purchase this. Otherwise it looks like a pretty normal, like pretty easy to take apart. You just have like a bunch of screws around the edges, pull the case apart, pull the whole thing apart. It's not as expensive as you guys might think. How much How much, How much? much do you guys think this keyboard costs? I guess 400. 400, son? Uh, 150. 150, you're pretty close. But you probably have the card open and you can see, you can see the price. <laughs> <laughs> Spence cheating. I thought that this thing was a little more expensive. Uh, I originally saw the Canadian price and it's like 212 Canadian. It's only 159 USD. What? It's pretty good, eh? And especially for something that's wireless, uh, is a very nice acrylic feel to it. The clear is a super cool style choice if you're into that sort of thing. I think a lot of people are right now. And it comes with a knob, you know, knobs are always great. I don't know, I'm pretty sold, especially cause it's not only Bluetooth, you do get a dongle, uh, which I just I usually prefer. And I kind of want this thing. So it comes in a couple different colors as well. If you don't like this perfectly clear look, there is a clear yellow, which actually might look really good with all this like brass-ish material, whatever it might be, and a clear black. So if you want something that's kind of just clear but tinted, um, then you can go for either of those options. I, you know, I gotta say, I think I kind of recommend it. I, I think that if you're looking for something that's wireless but doesn't feel small and flimsy like a lot of smaller wireless keyboards do, and you're not tied to something being metal. I'm personally totally fine with acrylic cases. I think that they often sound and look pretty good, but you're looking for something that's you know gonna stand out really well on your desk and just look super pretty. Ah, yeah, I think I'm really into this thing. Oh, there you have it guys. It's a Keyboom Phantom 81. I think it's pretty decent overall. I don't think it's a bad price. I recommend it. If you like this video, check out the Lord of the Rings drop control keyboards we checked out. We've got some really cool keycaps. Cooler than these ones.